Hello, users, and welcome back to another episode of Above It All, the show in where I cover what you need to know so that I can program you into being a good little lefty. That's right. That's right. So, thousands gather for the Black Trans Lives Matter rally in Brooklyn. You just love to see it. I got some other screenshots here. This was just, again, this is just beautiful. Would have been better if that was a trans flag, but hey, it's just beautiful to see this kind of support. Just absolutely. And if you don't know what this, the history of this, the, this specific rally was about, I got some highlighted text here to inform you. And if you're not too educated on trans issues or especially the intersection of black issues and trans issues, then, well, I got a, I've, you know, I got some stuff to tell you. So, attending Sunday's rally was the family of Leilene Polanco, a black transgender woman who died in Rikers Island in 2019. Her family has filed a wrongful death suit against the city, with new video showing the guards waited for more than an hour to get medical assistance after Polanco suffered an epileptic seizure while in custody. The video is the last piece of the puzzle, David Shaney's, an attorney for Polanco's family, told N NBC News. It is the last bit of indifference to her life that we saw and recklessness to a person who obviously needed help. Black transgender Americans face widespread discrimination and suffer homelessness and harassment and poverty at much higher rates than other transgender Americans or black Americans. So, I want to talk to you all about intersectionality. Intersectionality is, imagine like a Venn diagram, but instead of two circles, it's multiple circles. I am a trans woman. I can tell you my life has been negatively impacted tremendously, absolutely tremendously. As a YouTube person, every single day I wake up, I get at least 50 death threats or people telling me to kill myself or people telling me I need help, even though the help is what gives the, me the hormones. Like I, if I needed help, wouldn't that mean I go ask for a doctor for help? I mean, I, that's called, like, I don't know, but... I get literally thousands of these messages on a monthly basis, okay? But I'm white. I have been swatted by the police, okay? And the police were basically very, very, very harmful to me. They did not respect the fact that I was trans. Now, this was multiple years ago. I did not look as beautiful as I do now, let's just say. I was in kind of a more slightly awkward in-between zone. Um, but I've also been sexually assaulted. And when police were called into that in in in, in uh, instance situation, the police, upon learning that I was transgender, called me a sexual deviant and said that what had happened to me was my fault and that I should have been more careful. Now, I'm white, okay? But I have gone through extreme prejudice and extreme discrimination, not only online, but in person, by law enforcement. You know, I've encountered this problem in stores. I've encountered this problem with random people in everyday life. I've encountered this problem with half of my family disowning me, half of my family threatening to kill me, once they learned that I was trans and once they kind of dealt with that, that was their reaction. I have dealt with basically near homelessness. If it weren't for people that I had contact with, I would be homeless right now. I, would, I have dealt with homelessness in my life many times just from poverty. But I'm white. Okay, so intersectionality, for those of you that don't know, intersectionality is the basic idea the yeah, being trans sucks dick, and not the good kind of dick, I assure you. If it were the good dick, whew, let me just tell you, okay? But you know what else sucks in America? Being black. Being racially profiled. Having 
to face housing discrimination. You know what sucks even worse? Being a black trans person. So you have to deal with all the fucking shit that I mentioned about being trans. But you also have to deal with, instead of the cops calling you a sexual deviant, they might kill you. Instead of the cops swatting you and just pointing a fucking assault rifle into your back, they would probably just kill you on sight. Instead of having to nearly face homelessness and being able to get out of it because you know somebody who can help, you don't know somebody that can help, and you're homeless. These are the intersectional issues. The trans people in the black community face the most disgusting the most heinous, the most absolutely reprehensible forms of discrimination in our society that our society could ever concoct. And so if you do not support black trans people, both trans women and trans men, and everybody in between, black non-binary people, everybody, right? And, but especially black queer people. Because again, it is that intersectional approach, that analysis that says these are the biggest victims in our society. And as the adage says, a threat to justice anywhere is, a, is injustice everywhere. As long as black trans people face this discrimination, I still will face discrimination. There will not be a world and where I, as a transgender woman, face no discrimination, while a black transgender woman continues to face the same uh, discrimination that they do now. The whole point of Black Lives Matter is that if your initial reaction is all lives matter, think about that. If all lives mattered, then black lives would matter. And when black lives matter, all lives will matter. That's what that means. So when your initial reaction is all lives matter or white lives matter, chances are either you're racist or just really stupid. But if you're stupid, that's okay. You're allowed to be stupid. We're all born and bred to be stupid. This is America, after all. This is what they designed us to be. But that's why in an intersectional approach to these things is vital. You cannot pin down everything on class. You cannot pin down everything on race. You have to look at all the factors that play into discrimination, bigotry in this country and globally. And an intersectional approach is vital to understanding the human-to-human -human solidarity that is needed in this country to produce a real radical left-wing movement that can actually produce real systemic change. For example, the Bernie Sanders campaign, as much as I loved it, I met a lot of people that were with the Bernie Sanders campaign as volunteers, maybe, or just passive supporters that did not like trans people. How is that? Now, the obvious answer is that the Bernie Sanders campaign was so appealing that it even appealed to bigots. So much so that their material interests were at play so much so that they decided to volunteer. Now, the Bernie Sanders campaign, without a doubt, should have done a much better job screening for transphobic people within the Bernie campaign. Now, I was never assaulted. I was never brutally attacked by anyone that worked with the, the Bernie campaign. But what I'm saying is you would think that they would have had a more intersectional approach. There is a section of the left that completely wholeheartedly rejects intersectional policies, also known as identity politics. If you're a rabid white person, you may think, even if you're a lefty, even if you like Medicare for all, you may still be scared of identity politics. Well, guess what? Identity politics, as you understand it, is a right-wing brainwashed term. You have been brainwashed by the right on cultural issues. That's okay. Okay? 
It's embedded into us. We are raised this way. For those of you that aren't trans, for those of you that aren't gay, you don't directly experience the discrimination. Like again, I receive thousands of people telling me to kill myself, telling me the world would be better if I were dead, telling me that I'm terrible just for who I am. If I were to have made the same videos as a cis woman or a cis man, I would still get hate, but I wouldn't get as much hate. And if I were black, I would get dramatically more hate. And you cannot have a solidarity-focused politics without saying loud and proud that black trans lives matter. Because if black trans lives don't matter, then none of our lives matter. And that's the important message at the end of the day. So thank you for watching this video. I didn't think it was going to be this kind of profound, but, you know, it's important to me. You know, again, this is beautiful. Looking at all these people, when I first saw this, I literally started crying because it's just amazing. And I'm starting to cry right now, so I'm going to turn the video off. But again, you need to have an intersectional approach to solidarity-driven politics if you ever even want to conceive of a leftist movement in this country ever wielding power in any way. You can't say, I want Medicare for all, except the trans people. Because guess what? Someone's going to say that about you. I want Medicare for all, except the people with asthma. I want Medicare for all, except the diabetics. Someone somewhere higher on the food chain will always throw you under the bus. And you need to pick a side. Everybody, strength in numbers, or play in the middle. Try to kowtow to the rich corporations and leave us for dead, getting nowhere. So anyway, thank you for watching this video. Go watch some of these other videos and let me know what you think. And uh, hopefully you have a good rest of your day.